has confirmed 45 of the 48 ministerial nominees presented to the upper legislative chamber by President Bola Tinubu as cabinet members. Senate President Senator Gatu Lafabio puts the 45 nominations to voice votes, while three are said to still be undergoing security clearance. Who are former governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, Stella Okotete of Delta State, and Abubakar Danladi from Taraba State. The confirmation comes after President Tinubu's transmission of the list to the Red Chamber for confirmation on July 27. Is hereby confirmed. Will the Senate confirm the nomination of Senator Abubakar Eskiari, representing Bordeaux State, for appointment as a minister of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The nomination of Senator Abubakar S. Kiari, representing Borno State, is hereby confirmed as a minister of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, will the Senate confirm the appointment of Abubakar Momo, representing a due state for appointment as a minister of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The, appoint the nomination of Abubakar Momo, representing a due state, is hereby confirmed as a minister of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Bola Tinubu has met with governors of five northern states which share borders with Niger Republic. The governors are Ahmed Aliyu of Sokoto State, Umar Damadi of Jigawa State, Malabuni of Yobe State, Idris Nasir of Kebe State, and Diko Rada of Kasina State. The meeting is part of consultations by the president on the situation in Niger Republic. Let's take a short break and when we return, it will be time to speak with our guest of the day, who is a senior lecturer at the Department of History and International Relations, Lagos State University, Dr. Thomas, for discussion on the coup in Niger as ECOWAS reversal deadline ends. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Politics Tonight. Degan Beyond the headlines and now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am joined by a senior lecturer at the Department of History and International Relations, Lagos State University, Dr. Dapo Thomas, a discussion on the coup in Niger as ECOWAS reversal deadline ends. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. You're welcome. So, glad to say that the next few days in Niger will be absolutely crucial. I mean, even now that the ultimatum given by ECOWAS has lapsed. So what is next in this impasse? Well, it depends on the decision taken ultimately by uh, ECOWAS uh, that will decide which direction the scenario unfolding in Niger would go. Uh, for now, everywhere is still calm in the sense that we have not heard anything from the ECOWAS uh, leadership. And then the, these efforts, the coup plotters, the advantage or the opportunity to continue to consolidate their hold on power, and then to also mobilize uh, the masses, the people of Niger, for possible involvement if it arises, if it gets to that level, or possible involvement in the war. They, don't, they may not have to carry guns. You know, but the moral support will be sufficient for the coup plotters to gain some kind of uh, inspiration and then to be able to confront the uh, ECOWAS team or ECOWAS army. So ECOWAS has threatened military action as the last resort of this matter. How feasible is this? 
I will advise against that. I will not want a situation where Nigeria will get itself in, into uh, this kind of war. Mm, yes, it is good to issue ultimatum. It is good to also uh, try to back up your position you know, against coup in Africa or West Africa or wherever. But we have to tread softly. We just have to take so many dynamics into consideration. You know, when you go through or when you have access to um, ECOWAS, or let me use ECOMOG, because I don't see any military being raised now without the involvement of ECOMOG. In any case, that is even the military arm of ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the principal objective of ECOMOG, you will see that it is to safeguard peace and security in West Africa and intervene when conflicts arise. Intervene when conflicts arise. Is internal coup a conflict? The internal coup of Niger, is it a conflict? We, need, we really have to define that. Uh, it is only when that has been seen as conflict that you can now raise Nekomog or a military, you can now get involved militarily. Now, again, even if you intervene, what will be your role? Is your role going to be a restoration of the hosted president into office or maintenance of, I mean, the safeguard of peace and security? That is the objective of ECOMOG or ECOWAS. So, so on what ground do you now want to intervene militarily? Because I don't see any conflict in Niger. Whether you call it crowd renting hmm, or crowd mobilization, the, what we see on telly is the fact that the Nigerians, the people of Niger, are solidly behind. We have uh, not seen sufficient uh, support for the ousted leadership. And as such, it will be very difficult to now say you want to intervene militarily because you are not even guided by the objective of ECOMOG. So you'll be going contrary to the, something, I mean, to, to the principle of the intervention. Why? Because you are not going to protect or you are not going to uh, safeguard peace again. You are going to cause. In fact, if ECOMOG should go in now, you are causing conflict because there is no conflict there. Mm -hmm. Every, time, every day we see the people mobilizing and jubilating in support of the coup. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that when you look at the demographics of uh, the population in Niger, you, you discover that the stock, culturally, if, you, if you, Nigeria should raise, or maybe a course, should raise any military team against Niger, it's going to be like Nigeria fighting Nigeria. Because when you look at the stock of the ethnic composition, you will see that the Hausas, you understand? Mm -hmm. and now, the Hausas is a distinct, the Hausa stock is a distinct stock. It's Hausa. And then you see that they make, for, they make up 40, 54%. 54%. And then you also have the Fulani making up 6.5%. And then you have... Uh, Tanuri, making 4.5%. So when you look at it, that, you discover that you have 71%. Mostly Nigerian stock. And then you have the Sogai, 20%, and then you have the Tuareg, 10%. So the impression I have, based on this demographic arrangement or composition, is that it's not advisable for Nigeria. And I think I want to support the position of the Northern Senators, that when you fight those people in EJ. You, I, mean, I mean, it's not even a rumor that uh, Mohamed Buhari is also part of them. And that's why, that explains why most of the infrastructure uh, was being done, you know, the railway uh, and uh, some other things, you know, and then the military support and everything that we have been given to Niger, the supply of electricity and everything. So it's like Nigeria fighting Nigeria or mm -hmm. uh, uh, West Africa fighting Nigeria because that's 71%. You understand? And when you look at it, practically, most of these houses in Nigeria, the Kanuri in Nigeria, the Fulani in Nigeria, they have families there. And they have 
uh, cultural affinity with them. Then the third factor is the fact that you cannot, uh, war is unpredictable. If you assess or estimate Nigerian comp uh, capabilities based on what it has, and then you feel that you are maybe 100% or 90% above, you are mistaken. Because that was exactly what happened to Putin. Mm -hmm. He was only factoring in, or he was only, he only believed that Ukraine, you know, fighting Ukraine would just be a, a, a kind of a pushover thing. Unfortunately, that's not, you can't, in, in war, you can't put one plus one and get two, because you can never know those who are trying to intervene. And in any case, don't forget, Burkina Faso and Mali have already expressed openly their readiness to intervene. And then, from reports, the Wagner troop is there. Is there. And then Russia has also voiced it out that uh, uh, external forces should keep away. And the, the coup plotters have already stated that uh, they are supporting, I mean, they are uh, now, they are, they are already cutting off ties with France, US, Nigeria, and Togo. So now they are embracing Russia. And the people seem to be embracing Russia because you, could, you can see them hoisting the two flags, the flag of Niger and then the flag of... Uh, so because of the unpredictability of the outcome of war, it's very dangerous. You may never tell who are going to support, who, which people are going to support. Niger knows that with, uh, between Nigeria and Niger, they, they say it's a walkover. But they know that they are not the only people that will fight. So they are ready. They are ready. So, Doctor, some of the points you raised uh, will lead me to my next question. Most importantly, that it appears like Nigerians are happy with this. This is the fifth successful coup since independence. I mean, there have been record says there have been several uh, unsuccessful coups. And President Bazoum is the only legitimate president. Uh, do, what does this say about Nigeria as a country? It depends on the perception or it depends on the outlook or orientation of the military. The military does not factor in any other elements mm. when before it plans its own coup. What is important to them is how to get the power. And that's why I was laughing, you know, when ECOWAS was issuing an ultimatum. These people, whether it is three days, whether it is four days, as far as they are concerned, it was a successful coup. And they were not ready to negotiate or even compromise or even ready to uh, 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 discuss. They are leveraged to power now. No, they are not. You saw that even the uh, head of the coup, something, did not even see the sultan. I don't think he met the sultan and the Abu Bakr Salami. No, Abdul Salam. He was, I mean, he didn't even see them. Only the top chiefs, only the other chiefs. But yeah. So that's to show you that they are snobbing us, you know, and they are even saying, go to hell. So it's unfortunate. But once a military goes on to power, one week, Yes, the ECOWAS, ECOWAS felt that one week would be sufficient uh, to restore. And they did not want any extension or maybe to say one month because they know that once they have consolidated their position on, in power, it's been very difficult. And that's why they gave seven. And it is very dangerous to issue ultimatums when you have a situation, a scenario like this. When you issue ultimatum to any nation, to any group, and you fail to carry it out, you lose your credibility. So I only pray that ECOWAS will not lose its credibility. And I only pray that it will not, as a matter of uh, pride, say that now they want to go because they have already issued the ultimatum. No. Um, in a situation like this, there is politics. In a situation like this, there is diplomacy. You understand? I believe that what they should have done in the first instance is to discuss, to engage. You know, there should be diplomatic engagement between ECOWAS and the coup plotters. And then tell them, how to hand over. And if some of the coup plotters are interested in also taking part in politics, then they can tell them to also engage, I mean, to also be involved in the transition. So that will even test the popularity of Mohamed Bazoum. You understand? And then the coup plotter. So they can even encourage him. They can even encourage the, uh, the, the, the military leader. And uh, look, if you, want, if you want to transform, like how many months, like how many, like how many months can you give yourself to even transform as a civilian? Not transform. You must take part. Yeah, it will be a transition program. And then you will take part in the coup. I mean, you will take part in the, in the election. And then, so it will be a serious contest between you and Bazo. And then we will know whether the um, popular, I mean, the, this kind of popularity show that the coup plotters are doing, or the people are giving to the coup plotters, is really genuine. You understand? 
So they should have, that is what I believe they should have done, not force. You don't force, you don't use force against somebody who has already consolidated himself in power. And then you expect, he has seen, he has seen, and then again he has even seen the massive support of the people. Mm. So he knows that it's not, there is no division. There is no discord in the country. So he, 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 he now consolidates his, himself into office based on the support that he has enjoyed from the locals. You understand? And he knows that uh, Nigeria will not want to fight because uh, the, the, the old stock, the majority of the stock there is uh, made up of Nigerians. Mm. So oh. just like you, uh, many Nigerians are also dissuading ECOWAS from going into war with Nigeria. But the question is, is it the decision of Nigeria or ECOWAS as a body? No, it's the decision of ECOWAS. Nigerians are, I don't see, I mean, if we have to take our representatives in the Senate as speaking on our behalf, then they are saying no. Because they have already told the president categorically, no, don't go to war. You understand? So if that means Nigerians have, have spoken and they are against the war. Mm. So what's the, I mean, the junta refused to meet with ECOWAS delegation. What is the implication of this? The implication is that they are saying, uh, take whatever action you want to take and then you meet us there. They are ready for battle. They are ready, uh, not on the basis of what they possess. They are ready based on those that are behind them. Those who are giving them moral support. Those, I mean, the Wagner something is there. The Wagner, the Wagner group is just it's a mercenary group now that just fought uh, in Ukraine and took over Bakhmut for Russia as against the Russian army failing to even win Bakhmut. You understand? So the Wagner group has, is tested. It's tested already. And they are just fresh from war. And don't forget, this Wagner group is a group that, also, that was ready to also take up the Russian army within Moscow, within Moscow. You understand? They were marching to Moscow. So they are war-tested. When last did we fight war? When last did the Nigerian army fight war? When last did most of these countries fight war? When last did we fight the last war that our military really engaged in was the civil war. All the other operations they have been doing outside Nigeria are just peacekeeping missions. You understand? And then you make contributions possibly to Gulf War. You make two or three people combatants to just join them. But have we, have we tested? Yes, I, I mean, this is without prejudice to the profession, I mean, to professionalism of our soldiers. They can win the war, depending. But what I'm saying is that, yes, you, you can't fight those who are, they move from Russia down to Belarus. And then from even in Belarus, they are not doing tea party. In Belarus, they trained the army of Belarus. They just trained, finishing, uh, they just finished training the um, Belarusian uh, uh, army, and then they are coming now to Niger. And you want to go and fight those kind of people? I mean, no, it's, it's, it's very tough. It's very difficult. These are the complexities. These are the dynamics that ought to have been factored in. Just engage in diplomatic. I mean. Uh, discussion. All right, so now that we are where we are now, what does ECOWAS need to do uh, for it not to lose its credibility? Well, yes, you, you may lose credibility, but don't uh, bother about it in a situation like this, in a scenario like this. Yeah, like I said, two things should be involved now. You don't fight war based on emotionalism. You don't fight war based on pride. Mm -mm, you don't fight war based on pride. It was pride that pushed Putin to where he is today. You understand? And you can see that he's now taking him almost one and a half years. To, he has not even no sight at all that he's going to win the war or anything. You don't know those who are going to intervene. All these uh, French, U.S. and co. and all of them um, talking about uh, uh, they will support Equus, they will support Equus. Are they really ready to support Equus to the level that they have supported Ukraine? You understand? Then after the war, what is, like, what is likely to be there for them? You know, because most of these nations, they always look at what will benefit them after the war. Mm -hmm. You understand? They don't just go to war and uh, 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 put the lives of their own citizens in jeopardy. I, who, who, who told you that the uh, U.S. will release its own soldiers to go and get involved in a local war? No. Yes, to fight terrorism, yes, you can do that. But to now tell them you want to get involved in Nigeria or Nigeria, ECOWAS, Nigerian war. No, no, no. It's not likely that they will release their children. And that's why you can see them. They can pump money. 
they can give you uh, 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 ammunition, they can give you ammunition, they can give you everything, but for their children, no, they don't. Uh, they, have this, they are quietly disengaging. They, are quite, they, have, they have seen that, look, they can use the people of that country or whichever or the countries they are supporting to fight the war. They will supply the arms, you know, but they will protect their own children. And then we are now going to put our men there. For what purpose? To restore one man in power. And one man whose uh, popularity or whose, uh, uh, yes, whose popularity and acceptability we cannot determine based on what we have seen, based on the demonstrations we have seen from his people. If, he's, if the people are with us, it may give us a kind of moral inspiration to say, ah, yes, this thing is popular. But when we go in there, we are not going to be popular. We are not. So back to the meeting that was supposed to happen between ECOWAS delegation and the COPIS. I mean, some have described this as a slap on, on ECOWAS. But then, are the COPIS bound to honor such meeting? No. No. It is very dangerous for you to expose yourself to a man that is in power or that has just taken power. No. The levers of power always make somebody, I mean, make me the person to have the feeling of untouchability. And you can't touch me. You can't do anything because he's surrounded by soldiers. And then he has seen his people with him. So if you, you, what you should have done, I think the problem with the delegation was the message. The message was that they should restore power. He's not, you are not, <laughs> the, the, I mean, this is not a colonial uh, regime. How can you, you cannot give order to a nation, I mean, to, to a coup, a leader when you don't even belong to that country you know so when you expose yourself or ridicule yourself and that is exactly what happened the message should have been what i have said earlier that they should engage in constructive transition power transition not necessarily to for them to restore uh, this person in power ah we, we it's just we are we are only excited or we are just doing some kind of a uh, power show because that guy is still alive. Supposing he has been killed, what will have happened? So we should not now see the generosity or magnanimity of the coup plotters to have spared his life as a kind of offense or as a kind of uh, albatross against them. No. If they have killed him, what will have happened? You can't go and then where you, want, where you even go, what do you want to do? You want to put the vice president or whoever. Or what? That's internal affairs. And again, this... Who, uh, if you intervene, you are also flouting the, you are also violating the AU, uh, one of the AU charter, charters. Because you cannot intervene in the internal affairs of any other nation. You know? And like I said, is who part of conflict? Is who part of the conflict that ECOMOG is supposed to be monitoring? Mm -hmm. And then where you, it, it is clear, monitoring group, it is not a restoration group. Komog is not a restoration group. It's a monitoring group. There is nothing in the objective that states that you, you should go into another my person's country to restore. Yes, Babangida did it, but it was on a friendly basis because he was so close to uh, uh, um, Samuel Doe. That was 1990, in 1994. And then the people, the um, uh, Johnson and uh, Charles Taylor, they told, they told us that, look, this is an internal affair. And that was why for the period that they were there, Komog never achieved anything, you know. And they said they were maintaining peace, but the East directly they wanted to, the instruction was to go and uh, reinstate uh, Samuel Boy failed. So we have to be very careful what messages we send to these people, you know. We have to be very careful. So that delegation failed based on the fact that it, it received or it was, um, uh, uh, it was bedeviled with a, Wrong message. So, Doctor, another thing that remains unclear about that meeting is, was it the delegation that refused to meet the coup leader or otherwise? What do you think? Whatever it is. Obviously, the delegation team would not have refused, I mean, we couldn't have refused to meet because that was the mission. The mission was to go and meet the coup leader and then pass the ECOWAS message to, to him. And then he would now call a meeting. He, I mean, was that, that was what they were expecting. That was their expectation. That the ECOMOG, I mean, the ECOWAS delegation will come, the Sultan will sit there, Abdul Salam will sit, and then the coup plotter will see, or maybe with his men. And then they start discussing. And then they will say, ah, uh, I mean, are they going to appease 
appeal to him, or are they going to ask him? Maybe I mean, they were to tell appeal. Him, of course. So what if he refuses? Which he has done. He has done it. He has even he has even uh, uh, he has even uh, uh, gone beyond the ultimatum. You know, he has dismissed it. He has discountenanced it. So it was a wrong message that uh, made them to ridicule the delegation team. All right, so one of the conditions given by ECOWAS to the junta is reversal of the coup. How feasible is this uh, considering the situation on ground? Reversal of the coup? Yes. I've said it, I've emphasized it, that it's not possible. It's not. I, I, from everything, from what I see in the reports, either CNN or local television, I have not seen those people, you know, willing, willing, I haven't seen them willing to concede power or to restore Bazoom. You understand? The, worst, the, 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 the next thing that will happen, either they will kill Bazoom and then just say that uh, he's dead and that's all. However, they may not want to take that risk because they know that killing him may provoke, uh, may provoke some unrest. I don't know whether internally, but even if, even if it is internally, we don't even know whether the people will be happy or will not be happy. But you cannot go in and say, okay, because you have uh, killed somebody. But they, I know the coup plotters will not do that now. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not auspicious for them. It's not good for them. They can't. So the, it's better they hold him hostage and then continue to consolidate their position. They are moving. They are moving. They are, I mean, Russia is talking to them. So they are moving. They are consolidating their power. You know? And even when you look at it now, maybe about one month or maybe about three weeks or whatever number of weeks they have been in power. It's enough for them to even consolidate. And so they are moving ahead. They are, even, they are ready. They are ready for war. They are ready for mm. So they are not ready to restore any power. They are not ready to give to anybody. Like I said, what will have changed the dynamic is if the people of Niger had risen in support of the ousted president. Mm. It is a moral question. So they will face the moral issue but now they are not facing any moral issue. The moral issue they are even, that is confronting them is positive for them. It's positive. All, it's only international. What are, where, where, which international are we talking about? France. And everybody saw the pact that France signed with them. You know, the continued exploitation of an independent nation. That's one. Two, Nigeria. They know that uh, you can't do it. Why? Because your, your men are with us. You understand? So three, Togo. I mean, definitely Togo cannot even do anything militarily. U.S., well, I don't know. Well, because I know that in terms of aid, they have enjoyed tremendous and substan substantial aid, hmm? financial aid from U.S. Uh, because of his war against terror and because of his monitoring and everything. I don't know if that is sufficient who now say that they want to, in any case, they don't even want to respect anybody at this. All they want to hear, the, person, the only person they want to hear from now is Putin. And they have heard from him, because he has said that they should all go, all the powers should go. And so, so now he's free to come and exploit the uranium and the mine coal that they have. So ECOWAS has also lined up some uh, sanctions against Niger. How effective will this be? Yes, that, that's, that's another position. Apart from telling them to find a way to do this thing, uh, transition, you know, to quickly manage and then come up with a timetable. This is what is common. Mm. I have never heard, this is the first time I'm hearing you sending somebody to go and meet a coup plot, uh, plotter and asking him to uh, restore mm. or to restore the person. No, it's not, it's not common. Yes, you may, you, they may have tried it before, but it's not going to work. Um, so now, uh, that was what I expected. So the sanctions, yes, I would have said, when you first of all, your immediate action will be condemnation of the coup. It will be one day. It will be two days. In fact, it should be up to three days or four days. Why? Because that will allow you to look at the possible sanctions that will, not def that will definitely not even hurt your own people. You understand? You can see... This is about the patent package, uh, sanction package against Russia. Mm -hmm. They started from one, package one, two, three, now 13, about two years to the war. So they, still, they are still on 13. So they are coming up gradually with 
or so, because they know that some of these things will even affect them. So they are not going to do it in uh, just suddenly like that. They are doing it in bits. But we, in our own case, we just came up. You know, some of these things we now realize that look, our people will suffer from some of these sanctions. So why are we? Why did we even impose it in the first instance? So the first thing you should have done is to even study the sanctions, and then you put them up in packages. You understand? You put them up in packages and see how they are going to work. If, if you have up to 20 um, sanctions to impose, you first of all release five. See what the five will do in, five, uh, in, 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 in one week or two weeks. You know? So you impose sanctions today, and then you are saying they should, uh, you, are, you are claiming that you are going to do military intervention in one week. I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not happy that this is happening to Nigeria. All right, doctor, let's take a break. Tonight we're discussing coup in Niger as ECOWAS reversal deadline ends and I've been speaking with a senior lecturer at the Department of History and International Relations, Nigger State University, Dr. Dakwa Thomas. So take a break now and I will be right back. Please stay with us. Lagos is the most visited state in Africa as the fifth largest economy on the continent. Covering the state and its government, it's no me feet, it's a busy beat. We go beyond the curtain of tapes to travel in far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. The greater Lagos shall be ours. We tell you stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. Amadido Jasalamadini, I live in Lagos, inside Lagos. Welcome back to Politics Tonight, and tonight we're discussing the coup in Niger as ECOWAS reversal deadline ends with a senior lecturer at the Department of History and International Relations, Lagos State University, Dr. Thomas. All right, doctor, let's continue with our conversation. I mean, since 2020, uh, the whole of Sahel region has been hit by coup, talking about countries like Burkina Faso and Mali. But it appears like Niger is the only country which ECOWAS has talked about potential military intervention. My question is, what makes Niger's case uh, more complicated than others? I think it was uh, a hype. Uh, and you know, the president, that's uh, Ashwaju, just maybe a few days before the coup, just alluded to it that coup will not be tolerated in West Africa, even in Africa. You know? So when this one hap now happened, so there was that expectation by uh, people in South West Africa, you know, as to what the president is going to do as the chairman of was. So what is he going to do, you know? So I don't know why, uh, because decision making is very, very tough. Mm. And it's not something, I'm so sure that he was not the only one who decided that they should issue a ultimatum. Oh. Yeah, I don't know the involvement of our uh, I don't know the involvement of our diplomats hmm? or our experts in terms of input to the, uh, to the decision. Because foreign, um, foreign policy, uh, sorry, the Foreign Affairs Department ought to be involved to guide them. You know, that's to approach decision making uh, democratically. You understand? You must get in these people involved. So what did they say? Were they part of the process? You understand? Because it's, it's so shameful. So shameful. So what popularized this? What made this? What hyped this? Was the fact that our president just issued that. But irrespective, it should have been treated as just a wish 
-hmm. not as another. You understand? That, was, that would have been seen as his own wish. That, well, even where if you use the word, not, it will not be tolerated. It does not mean it can still be a wish. You understand? It can still be something that he wishes. It will not happen. And then when it's now happened, the uh, immediate action should not be issuing, issuing of ultimatum. No. The immediate action should now be a kind of sober reflection. Oh, I just spoke three days ago. So why is this happening now? You understand? And then you, you sit down, analyze all these issues, uh, and then you take your decision. It's, it's, it's very unfortunate that we have taken a decision that is not popular. Not popular, it does not mean that it will stop the ECOMOG, I mean ECOWAS, from going ahead. No. Deployment of military, deployment of uh, whatever, we are, they are ready. But is it okay in view of what we have just, in view of the things that we have outlined? Is it going to be, are we going to win the war? It is, I mean, at the end of the day, are we going to even succeed in putting Bazoum? What if we go there and as a result of our intervention, they now kill the guy? Mm. So, a necessary fertility. So, do you now want to install another person? You are still going to ask them to go into democracy. You understand? You are, if you, even if you take over, definitely some members of the country, I mean, some of the popular, I mean, some of the people would have to, con you have to constitute a panel or a transition committee that will oversee this program. So why not do it now? Why not ask for that now? I'm telling you, it, it may be something that even the coup plotters would jump at. I mean, if, if, if you challenge him, challenge him morally, that okay, if you are popular, what we are saying now, okay, there is no need to fight again. Let's, let's set up a, a transition committee. You can even supervise it. You understand? You can supervise it from your own party or join any, a particular party. And then you go into election with Bazoom. Let him also go into another round. So test your popularity. And then we can see. That's, that's fair. That's fair. You know, that's fair. Yes, I don't know why there is this domino, of course. And it's unfortunate, you know. But I, I want to believe that most of these West African or African leaders, those who are planning coups, are definitely not interested in the welfare of their people. They are not even interested in the development of their nations. Because where do you want to operate? Where? At Tekowas, you are not going to be represented. African Union, you are not going to be represented. Uh, all these advanced nations, all these uh, EU, US, and they are not going to reckon with you. Nobody wants to see a man in uniform. No, it's, 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 it's obsolete. It's not something that we want to revive. So, but they are just interested in holding on to power. They don't even know what to do with the power. They don't even have an idea of the environment, I mean, of the, of the, of the at, uh, international atmosphere, international environment. They don't even know how it operates. Because if you know how it operates, why should you create a prior status for yourself and for your country? What do you want to gain? So you are only interested in, your, in, 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 in what comes to you, what benefits you as the, pre, as the president. You understand? Maybe you want to amass wealth, maybe you want to, but for, for what? If it is for the people. Now Russia that is even engineering the whole thing, how sure, even when Russia was Russia, when there is no war that it is committing its own resources into, how much aid have you collected from Russia? So now that Russia is even involved in war, whether you like it or not, the way the war is going now, there will be some kind of reconstruction that Russia itself will do. And then there is no way this war will not have affected, the sanctions will not have affected its economy. And then, so they will be thinking of how to revive, how to also recover. Uh, so you, how much do you want to get from Russia? And then Burkina Faso and Mali that are even giving you support, do they even have the funds to give you? So what do you, how, what do you want to operate? Well, how do you want to operate effectively if you are interested in uh, infrastructure, if you are interested in the development of your people, why, why are you doing this? Number eight, a uh, poorest nation in Africa. After uh, uh, Western Sahara, after Burundi, after Madag Madagascar, in uh, uh, Mozambique and Co. And then what do you want to do? It's a very poor nation. Well, where, do, where will you get the fund? You are even fighting your neighbor, your powerful neighbor, your rich neighbor, Nigeria. You understand? If, if anything, if their economy has not collapsed, it is as a result of what Nigeria has been subsidizing. 
you know. You know, some of these nations, we subsidize, we give them a subvention. You know, we give them subvention. And then you have lost what you are getting from the United States. You have lost what you are getting, well, let us even remove France. But you have lost what, what you are getting from the U.S., you are, you are losing what you are getting from Nigeria. So how do you want to survive? You can't. So I just believe that Nigeria should just leave them. Let them even carry on. Let's see how far they can go. Yes, I understand that some of them have spent three years or two years. For what? Doing what? Doing what? Nothing. They cannot move ahead. They can't even develop anywhere. So now that the coup is have closed the airspace in Niger, uh, with this, uh, what's the possibility of a military intervention or the sanctions imposed? It's, it's, it's for security reasons, not commercial. It's for okay. security purpose because if they have not closed the airspace, then definitely we can fly above the airspace and then we start bombing them. And then they may not even be able to distinguish which one is a friendly plane or which one is even a commercial plane. I mean, as advanced as Russia is, whether deliberately or not, ego, you know, failed, or Russia generally, let's say, failed to even detect that a Malaysian plane was coming and then they killed 270-something people. So if the airspace had not been locked, then it's possible that they would just be... Uh, 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 you know, throwing missiles or whatever at any plane that is flying above the airspace. So now to know whether you are an enemy, you are an enemy plane or a commercial plane or whatever, we are look, locking this up first. So we will now see what will happen later. So they are taking time to study the environment and the situation before they can now uh, open. The first thing you do is to lock your borders when you take cool like that, where you have an enemy, where you have a neighbor as your enemy. So you lock your border with that country, and then you close your airspace to ensure that uh, those words that are will be flying, you are the person that will clear them. They need screening and clearance before they can fly your airspace. It's not a normal situation, you know, but this one has called for it. So that's what you should have done. Or that's, what you, that's why they are locking up their airspace. All right. So the junta has severed implication, diplomatic relations the rather, what? with the junta uh, yeah. has severed uh, diplomatic relations with France and Nigeria. What's the implication of this? Nothing. Mm. As, far as, as far as they are concerned, they are not gaining anything from France. They are gaining from Nigeria, the electricity. So what's the implication of this? There is no implication. Uh, if the people are supporting, I mean, except you are saying that those who are there, 96% of them are illiterate. So that's where they will not know what generosity, how magnanimous Nigeria has been to them. So if they are now jubilating and even uh, calling our president all sorts of names, and that shows that they are ready for the consequences. But can we really say uh, Niger is not gaining anything from France before, because France has about 1,500 troops in that country? Uh, so at what, the, at what uh, price? I mean, if, if France is paying the bill, it's different. But when you exploit uranium, mine coal, and then you take it, and you, you're making, uh, let's, hypothetically, let's say $2,000, and then the country that ha owns the resources, you are giving uh, $200. So what kind of development are you doing? What kind of, I mean, why would they regret you leaving their country? They're happy. They have even stated the that they don't want France in their country. Because if you have been... Uh, lording over them, if you have been their colonizer, and for years, 60 years, going to 60 or maybe 50 something years now, 60 years plus, and then you, 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 the, the people as at now are saying to her, which you are saying, no, you should leave, destroying your embassy. That shows that you are not popular. That shows that you have been exploiting them. That shows that they see your presence in their country as an anathema, as a kind of, uh, as a, a, a as an epitome of retrogression, something that sets them back, that you are the cause, major cause of their backwardness. So that's what they are, that's the implication. The implication is that they see you as the, the enemy of progress, that you are not even developing the place for them, their country. You are taking the money, you are just working on the pact that they signed with you, and you are saying you even want to go to court. To do what? You know, what's the purpose? What's the legal backing for such pact? So the, uh, I don't think it has any financial implication. Mm -hmm. They don't feel that they are getting it. It's only Nigeria they feel okay. Because 
we have been very generous and we don't even mine their coal. We don't even mine their uranium. We don't do we don't exploit them. We are more generous to them. We have been spending four hundred million to do this, two billion to do that for them. Yes, we are it's going to encourage, it's going to stimulate trade uh, uh, trans, I mean trade transactions between the two. And that's what I feel that as neighbors we are not supposed to fight. It's unfortunate that our president finds himself in the saddle now at this particular time. But this is not the right time for us to fight in Egypt. All right, Doctor, but if the coup is saying they seized power because of the uh, deteriorating situation, security in the country, is this substantive enough? Of course. Any any <laughs> uh, even when we had coups, hmm? When we have uh, serial coup plotters in Nigeria, when we come and say, and we're talking about uh, our clinics have turned into shambles, we are not even talking about uh, uh, general hospitals. We are not even mm. talking about teaching hospitals. So anybody can use anything. They will just say clinics. I mean, we have turned our hospitals into clinics. We have turned our hospitals. So they, will, they have uh, one or two reasons which they feel as official. You can't just come and then you are displacing the president, the sitting president, and then you will not give any excuse. So whatever excuse, whatever reason or reasons they are giving, as far as they are concerned, are enough to even uh, take over power. They must tell the public something. They must tell the international community something. So whatever they have told us, whatever they have said, that uh, deteriorating situation in the country and everything, I, I mean, that shows that they are telling the truth because uh, the people have shown through their demonstrations that, oh, these people are telling the truth. Because apart from, apart from Muritala's uh, coup, I can't see, and then Muritala's coup and possibly Buhari's coup of 1984, 83, 84, you know, that we jubilated. It was far, the first one, the Muritala something, it was because people were tired of the one regime, nine years, even though we didn't even have anything against him. You understand? People, people were, I mean, people loved him, but just because he was too, staying too long in power, and then he kept on moving the transition programs. It kept on moving, and that's that that that's not good. Don't take the people for a ride. Yes, don't take the affection or the love the people have for you for a. I mean, don't take it for granted. So that was what uh, 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 go on. Then the second popular coup was that of uh, Buhari. You know, 1935, and it was because everybody was tired of the politicians, particularly the APN regime. So people were tired. And so anything was read, anything would do at that particular point in time. All the other coups, Babangida school, eh, Abacha school, all of them, psh, rubbish, unnecessary. So military plan coup anyhow. Mm -hmm. So the situation seems to have now polarized the world into two. I mean, we have those for intervention and we have those against. Why this? No, 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 no. I don't think coup is popular because mm -hmm. we have six in uh, Africa. No, we have about maybe 50-something African countries. Then when you look at the international community, I think it's only Myanmar that you have a military. You know, in Asia, I don't know of any military apart from Myanmar. Uh, in Europe... None. In South America, um, I don't think so. So it's not popular. It's still they are, we have isolated cases of coup plotters. That's what you should say. It's not that it's popular, but it's better uh, we nip it in the board. That's what the president is saying. You know, just to nip it in the board. But in order to nip it in the board, we must be very careful how we trade. All right, Doctor. So having said a lot this evening, what is the best option for ECOWAS at this time? The best option is to reassess the uh, events of the past few weeks in view of the, what did the delegation, what did the delegation team, what did they tell, what was the feedback, what happened. So they will have to appraise that. They will appraise the feelings of the people, hmm? Nigerians generally, and then possibly some other countries. They will also take into consideration the decision of the, the decision of the Senate, because it's sacrosanct. It's mm -hmm. very important. You understand? So these are things that they will ponder over, reflect, and then see the way forward. But like I said, the way forward is to is for a peaceful transition to take place. So how ECOWAS is going to get involved in the transition process is what they should look for. Yes, you have blown hot and cold. I mean, you have blown hot 
to the coup plotters. Now you can blow code. Is that what they call diplomacy? It's not in every situation that you use force. Force does not, mm. it's not every situation that force also source, uh, solves problems. So, it does, it, there is no shame. What, what kind of shame? There is no shame when you are looking for peace. So, negotiate with them on transition. So, talk to them. You understand? And if that will even be better, because we Mali in Burkina Faso, we are having maybe two years, three years. But they may not. You may say, okay, let's discuss it. So you may throw it to them that you are giving them six months, or you believe that in six months they can transit. I mean, they can go into a transition program. And they will say, ah, no, no, we don't. Uh, six months is not okay. One year. But let us even talk reasonably to them first. Let's see what that will come out. I mean, what will come out of that? Yeah. You understand? They may, be, they may like the idea because now they have seen that the people love them. You understand? All right. uh -huh. They have seen that the people love them. All right. So precisely for President Zinubu, who is the chairman of the COAS Authority of Heads of States and Governments, what would you advise him to do? That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. There is nothing wrong. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing wrong in calling the coup plotter, I mean the leader. He will even be very happy. He will be excited to even talk to uh, the president. So if he now snobs, if he now snobs the president, yes, that is part of what we are going to appraise. And then the world will see that, well, they have taken the initiative to even talk to them peacefully or to even talk about peace, and, but they failed to take that opportunity. So these are the things that we are going to pile up against them. What they told the delegation team, how they snubbed the delegation team, how they snubbed our president if he calls, if he calls them, how they snubbed him, how they did this, how they did that. You understand? And so these are the things that you will now have against them. Then you can now uh, hold another meeting, and then all the other heads of state will now make input. And then you call your experts to also give you a position. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Thomas, a senior lecturer in the Department of History and International Relations, Nego State University. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on the Thank program. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at CBC News NG and at Olajumoke00 using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash CBC News Nigeria. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. Goodbye. This mission? Yes, but how? Just one question. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet, you need Hapic 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapic sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleanish. Wow! Now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah! The next house is yours. beginnings to the extraordinary we've witnessed incredible bonds the rise of legends in the most challenging of times and the most unforgettable moments that kept us at the edge of our seat everything up to now was just the beginning Legends go head-to-head -head as timelines have collapsed for the ultimate showdown. Welcome to Big Brother Niger All-Stars. Starts 23rd July. Headline sponsor, Money Point. There is always more to a story than the screaming headline. The part of a story that is not told casts a shadow. It's like the part of an object that is not reached by light. On TVC News, I'm able to explore the many angles the rat was story, talking to stakeholders, asking the difficult questions, and digging for facts. I believe the viewers are able to make a better decision if they're well informed and understand not just a part, but the complete story. TVC News, first with Breaking News. Nigeria's Niger Delta region 
where the black gold continues to flow and fuel Africa's largest economy, where the line between wealth and poverty has never been thinner. Oil, gas, politics, development and community issues all are highly valuable commodities in the Niger Delta. How do they combine and how can they work together to spawn a new era in the Niger Delta as he probes deep to analyze issues in the region from angles never before explored. Inside the Niger Delta with Mamode Akuga, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. Hello there. It's a brand new quarter and your favorite TV program, CAC Weekly, is about to unveil new innovations fresh from the Nigerian company registry. Now, have you heard of the extensible business reporting language, SBRL standard, for filing of electronic financial statements? Do you also know that there's so much that you can do on your own on the company's registration portal, CRP, from the comfort of your home or your office? Because the CRP offers end-to-end -end electronic registration solution for accredited customers and the general public to initiate and complete pre-registration and post-registration applications electronically, online filing of annual returns, online registration of limited liability partnership and limited partnership. See you there. Genuine business people desirous of success. In today's environment, ignore the taxman only at their own peril. Under the oversight of this board, the FRS will continue its transformation into a premier revenue collecting agency. For up-to-date and accurate information on your obligations, duties and rights under the various tax laws in Nigeria, Watch Tax Matters on TVC News Thursday, 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Every major news story is with many perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time do you see news? First, with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News. Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the most exciting event on television, Riot. Righteous Invasion of Truth presented by the Power Broadcasting Network, Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome you to an exciting adventure with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. That's what drives me. That's what brought us on TVC television station, to bring you the riches of redemption, to equip you to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. Help me invite a friend, a family member, somebody ask them to tune to this TV station right now. I'm telling you, we're going to have an exciting time in the message of Jesus Christ. Now, I have a, a gift for you today just for tuning in here to hear me teach the Word of God, a free gift. It's a magazine called The Righteous Invasion of Truth magazine, loaded with treasures, with things that will build you up, equip you, and bring you to a place where you are enjoying all that is yours in Christ Jesus. All you need to do today, give me a call quickly. The numbers are on the screen. Send me a text, chat us on WhatsApp. Just reach out to us or shoot an email. But we'll make sure you get hard copies or soft copies of these magazines delivered to wherever you are around the world. Make sure you furnish us all your details. That's number one. Number two, I have a daily devotional called the Christocentric Meal. It's every day every day both on video and on audio i like to send a copy of that devotional to you every day every day you heard me right every day for the whole year and it's going to be free we can send it to your phones whatsapp we can send it to you on email the treasures of god where i take time to teach the word of god and to speak a word of prayer for you prophetically every blessed day i mean imagine god's word spoken over your life on a daily basis. It's going to be exciting. You want to join that community today. If you send us a mail, 
or you shoot us a text or chat us on WhatsApp or give us a call. We will make sure the Christocentric meal is delivered to wherever you are around the world. I'm so excited, friend. We want to study the word of God together. So fasten your seatbelts, get your pen, important, and your notebook as we adventure right now in that service where the Spirit of God is already moving. Happy viewing. Previously on Riot. Now say, you think God cannot change his mind and say, no, no, no. Someone even said that God will say, no, you cannot handle it, my son. And they don't have a verse for it. They are only speaking experience. And they are imagining how they will have treated their children. And they are putting God in their shoe. My child asked me for car. I told my child, no, you can't handle it. No, it's your poverty that is denying your child a car. It's not because your child cannot handle it. Real rich people buy Lamborghinis for their infant baby of one, one month. And they give the baby a driver. But the car is bought in the baby's name because they have the money. You are busy using poverty excuse to tell your child, no, you can't handle it. Say, I don't have the money. I'm the honest for once. The baby can't handle it, but there's a driver for the baby. There's a caretaker for the baby. True or false? Uh -uh. You, if your father was very rich as a multi-billionaire, in his will, wouldn't he have will billions to you? Will he say you are an infant, you cannot handle it? He will put it there for you. Even though you are still an infant. Then he will give a lawyer to keep it in your interest till when you are ready for it and you need it. And you may need it at the age of five. You may need that money at the age of five. But at the age of five, you can't handle it. So you will have an administrator that will look at your needs and administer and administer it. So you telling your child, you can't handle a car. How old are you? It's poverty. Just tell your child, I cannot afford it. And be honest so that your child will be able to understand. Not to be looking at you one kind. You are trying to put God in your poverty shoes. You forget that the earth is the Lord's. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole wide world. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands. He owns the world. Today on Riot. What is it to give you a car? 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 That even a billionaire will give you three without thinking whether he knows you or not. There's no scripture that will ever say that God says no. You can't show me that. It's not there in the Bible. God says no. Then he gave you an option. You ask for car. No. But because I know you really need mobility, take keke na pep. Which is even more dangerous. Keke is more dangerous than car. Car is more protective than keke. Car has airbags. Eh? Car is stable. Keke is one finger on two. Any wind can carry keke to the bush. So which one should God even give first? Uh, <laughs> see how you are thinking. <laughs> Glory to God. The essence of prayer is desire. What thing soever you desire when you pray. The essence of prayer is desire. And you must not be double-minded about that. When you are double-minded, you are unstable in all your ways. There's a way you can carry over your early relationship to your heavenly father. You can begin to see God like your biological father was. And that's why we as Christian fathers, all of us that are fathers in this house, we have a responsibility to mirror the father as much as we can. So we can help our children to have proper perspective when it comes to the fatherhood of God. Don't be double-minded in the way you see your father. We said the other day that there are different kinds of requests and you, can, you cannot use the same rules. There's prayer and things. 
There's prayer and people. When the subject of your prayer is connected to people, then there's prayer and circumstances, which we are going to merge in a few. Then the fourth one is prayer and you. Prayer and you. That's the next one. Now, you are praying about yourself. Prayer and you. Which could also be circumstantial. But also know that the principles of these prayers always differ. And I'm using the word principle a bit loose. You will see how scripture teaches it. They are always different. Look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching their unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Look at that word, all prayers. All prayer actually means manner of prayer. Manner of prayer. When we say all prayer, I'm always careful to say, instead of saying kinds of prayer, I prefer to use kinds of requests. That's better for me. That is, a believer can have more than one request in the place of prayer. I can have more than one request or I can have more than one demand in the place of prayer. Now, before we proceed further, remember we said prayer can be about things, about people or persons, about situations, and about yourself. Now, let's see what you pray in the name of Jesus. There are things you cannot demand for in the name of Jesus. There are things you cannot demand for in the name of Jesus. I'm not saying you cannot demand for it. I'm only saying it is not a demand in the name of Jesus. I'm not saying you cannot demand for those things. But I am saying they are not a demand in the name of Jesus. For instance, Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you. Prayer that is not in love. Is not in the name of Jesus. Prayer that is not in love. Cannot be in the name of Jesus. Remember we arranged it the other time. We said... It starts with praying. When you pray, you bless. You do good. You curse not. That's how we arrange it. When you pray, you bless. You do good. You curse not. It says you will be like your heavenly father. So you cannot pray in the name of Jesus... To curse someone. You cannot pray. I'm not saying you cannot curse people. But I say it cannot be in the name of Jesus. You cannot pray in the name of Jesus and curse someone. You can't pray in the name of Jesus to hate. Any prayer of hatred cannot be in the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter 9 verse 53 to 55. Put it up. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Next verse. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? Next verse. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. Take note of that. Manner of spirit you are of. Next verse. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. They asked Jesus to bring down fire and burn people. And he said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save. 
So none of our prayer in the name of Jesus can destroy lives. No prayer in the name of Jesus can destroy lives. You cannot pray in the name of Jesus to destroy. You cannot. I'm not saying you cannot destroy, but it will not be in the name of Jesus. I'm not saying you cannot destroy, but it will not be in the name of Jesus. I'm not saying you cannot pray fall and die, fall and die, fall and die for people, but it will not be in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus 